Hi friends, welcome to Wafa Studies YouTube channel. This is continuation to the PowerShell playlist. In this video, we will be focusing on error handling. How we can do error handling in PowerShell. You know that right, I mean if you are from C language or C sharp or Python background, there is something called try, catch and finally blocks. So using that blocks, you can handle the errors in your Python code or C sharp code, right? It is same here actually. Even in PowerShell, we have try catch and finally blocks, which we can use to handle the errors actually. So to understand this, if you see this example, whatever I written a code here, we are going to practically write this code as well. So here, let's assume I want to, this is my logic actually, which I wanted to execute, okay? And if anything goes wrong in this logic, I want to cast that exception, okay? So I don't want to blindly go my script error. So I want to cast that and I want to handle that error properly. So that's the reason I kept that inside the try block. And when any error happened inside this block, then automatically it will come to the catch block. And from the catch block, whatever the code I write here, it will execute that. So in this example, I am just printing that error whatever happened, okay? And uh, there will be something called finally block as well that will run at any cost. For example, catch will execute only when some failure happens in the try. If there is no failure, then catch will never run. But finally block will always execute. Okay, so this will always run whether there is any error or whether there is no error in the try. In all the cases, finally block will run. And usually this finally block people will use to clean up the resources. If you have opened any object that will perform some kind of operations on a file and you've taken that file as an object, now you want to close that file. So you can keep that code in the finally block, okay? So if all this is not making sense, let's try to practically write this code and understand what I am trying to say. So let's, uh, right now if you see, I am in the testing.ps1 file. It's a Python, I mean, it's a PowerShell script file. Now here, I wanted to write a code uh, that will help me to uh, do some kind of a division operation. Okay, so let's let me use this param operator uh, or keyword and we know that using this parameters uh, keyword we can create parameters for any file. So let's create two parameters one called num number one and another one is called number two. So we have taken two numbers. Okay, now here what I wanted to do is I wanted to perform a division and I want to store the division in a variable called result. So I created a variable called result and what I am doing number one divided by number two variable. Okay. So here uh, if you see this number one variable is a uh, numerator and number two variable is a denominator. Okay. So now whatever happens, whatever the uh, result comes into the result variable, right? So that I wanted to print. So I wanted to print like this. So result is dollar result, okay? So whatever the output comes uh, from this division, so that will get stored in this variable and that's what I'm printing it here. So let's save these changes here. And now here, if I try to run this Python file in the terminal using the testing.ps1, I'm already in the sample code folder. So I'm simply running my Python file. So when I run it, it will, it, it is actually uh, giving an error. It is saying attempting to divide by zero, blah, blah, blah. So why this error is happening? Because I haven't supplied any values. That's what you might be assuming. So let's supply some values here. Okay. So for the testing dot uh, PowerShell file. So in the number one variable, I am passing a value 10 space in the number two parameter. It's not variable parameter, right? Number one and number two are parameters. So I am passing value 10 into the number one parameter and I am passing value five into the number two parameter. Now, if I run this, if you see the result here, it clearly says that result is two. Why? Because 10 divided by five will give you two as a result and that's what we printed here. So my code is working fine without any issue. But let's do one thing. So let me clear this, okay? And uh, now let me rerun this PowerShell file uh, this time, right, 10 divided by 0, I am doing it. And uh, let's uh, let's see what will happen. So basically in the denominator, that means for the number 2 variable, I am passing value 0. 
and let's see what will happen now when i hit enter you can see that it errored out okay so my code got terminated okay it was not executed as, as expected because uh, we know that we cannot use zero in the denominators it will error out always and it is telling attempted to divide it by zero and it is telling there is an error in the character in this file at line number six blah 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 but this is not a handled error right all of the sudden my script is breaking so but what if if i want to handle it so i wanted to catch that exception whenever happens and then i wanted to do something there then i should keep all my logic into try block and then use the catch block below so what i can do here is i will use this try okay i will use this try catch and finally blocks okay so i am using that and uh, if you see this uh, if you see here see we have a try and then we have a catch and then we have a finally so let's take all our logic so let me copy all our logic into the try block okay so i am pasting it there so let me remove these spaces we don't we don't need all these spaces then in the catch block i what i wanted to do is so i wanted to write so far now i am not doing anything fancy i am simply using write host saying there is error happened reach admin team something like that okay so this way i am not giving the actual error into the end user right so i am i am catching the error and i am giving some generic message so that way we no need to uh, i mean we, we are we are not exposing the technical details to the end user uh, and we are safe actually from the end point side so after this right below we can we can have a logic to uh, save that exception details into some table or into some file and all and we can explore that in real time scenarios okay so now in the finally block is always runs actually whether you do something if there is any error in the try if there is no error in all the cases finally block will run so let's try to run print some message like script execution completed so that's what i wanted to print in the finally so now with these changes now let's try to run my script so i'm saving my script and here in the terminal so let me clear this and now let's try to divide by uh, 2 okay so i am passing 10 as a numerator 2 as a denominator and i am hitting enter so you see that the result 5 came from where this line came because of this execution okay so, and then we got another line saying script execution completed it came because of this line so that means sorry not because of this line it came because of this uh, finally line okay so this execution completed so that means finally block executed even though try block was executed successfully now let's try to get some error here instead of two as a denominator i'm passing zero and let's see what will happen now if you see we got that there is an error reach admin we haven't we, we didn't got all that red lines now right code was not all of a sudden breaking code is still running and we are handling the exception using this catch block and we we, we given this generic error back okay and also if you see the execution completed line also came from the finally block that means even if there is any error in the script still the finally block runs so finally block will always execute whether there is an error or not error okay so this is one thing now what if i wanted to i want to accept the access that error okay so when there was a red lines we see that divided by zero error right but i am not able to see now because i am printing a generic message how to access that generic uh, or how to access that actual exception or actual error message so for that what we can do it is okay let me write one more line here then here i can say like error occurred okay and here right i am using dollar open bracket close bracket and inside this i can write expressions actually so there is a inbuilt variable called dollar underscore so this dollar underscore variable actually holds the exception details always so on that variable there is something called exception object on that object there is something called message property so if you use this this will get the exception details actually for you okay so let's save these changes now let's run this by passing zero as a denominator and hit enter now if you see here we got that error happened reach admin team and also we got this attempted to divide by zero error so fr why from where we are able to access it because of this exception object using dollar underscore system variable and then use the exception property on it then message property on top of that entire object okay 
so this is one more thing to know and uh, as i said finally block will always run okay so let's go back to our one note i hope i have covered everything yeah one more thing is we can actually use this throw to throw the exceptions intentionally for example what i mean to say is in this case we know that in the denominator we cannot pass zero right so maybe i wanted to handle that logic in the implementation itself so what i can do here is so i can use if i can use if then i can say i, I can validate the value in the number two parameter if number two parameter value equals to zero then then what i will be doing it here is throw an exception saying uh, we cannot pass zero as denominator so this is the exception i wanted to pass okay so when you use these exceptions right then what will happen right whenever the code hits this exception immediately the execution will come out of the entire try block and exception will directly go to the catch and it will print that exception also accordingly like how you handled in the catch so i am manually throwing the exception here because i know i want to implement some business logic here business validation here and that should check something and if that is the case then throw the exception directly no need to go to the actual implementation and run the implementation directly throw from there so that's what i am handling it here using this throw keyword so let's save these changes so now what will happen is so let me clear this and now let's pass 0 as a denominator and 10 as a numerator now when i hit enter you see this automatically we cannot pass 0 as a denominator that's what the exception came from where it came because that's what we are throwing using the throw keyword right so this throw keyword will help you uh, to throw some exceptions manually by performing some business validations as well okay so that's it in this video i hope you guys understand how the try catch and finally blocks are helpful uh, to perform the error handling in the powershell and how we can use this throw keyword uh, to manually throw the validation errors also and accordingly handle them in the catch block so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like it please hit this like button uh, and also consider subscribing to my channel uh, so that you will get the similar content more and more thank you happy learning